I want us to dive in and we're going to tie the breakthrough into praise today by titling this message birthing of a breakthrough Matthew chapter 1 first 14 15 verses is one of those verses that I'm pretty sure that many of you you skipped through if you ever started Matthew and typically we start Matthew every few months again and again and again because we get lost somewhere there um, in the middle or at the end and so um, the third verse holds a secret here for our service today and the third verse has three words has more words but we're going to highlight three words only and I want you to see this in Matthew 1 3 it says Judah begot Perez there's a whole story and a drama behind how that happened but I'm not going to go into that the word Judah means praise begot means he gave birth and Perez means breakthrough so let's just read in simple English praise gives birth to breakthrough amen, amen. we're done <laughs> we learned all that we need to learn <laughs> thank you Jesus now let's put it into practice praise gives birth to breakthrough somebody say this with me say praise, praise. gives birth, gives birth. To, breakthrough. to breakthrough say it again praise, praise. Gives birth, gives birth to breakthrough. breakthrough amen let's look at practically how does that happen number one praise gives God a throne to sit on it says in the Bible that God is enthroned in the praises of his people as we were singing that this morning God inhabits the praises of his people meaning God's throne on earth is the praises of his people Have you ever had a chair that somebody gave you that was missing one leg and when you sat on it you fell if somebody did that to you they were not nice how many people give God a chair that has missing legs the way we invite God into our problem is not that we thank God for our problem we thank God in our problem thus putting a chair where God can sit your praise your thanksgiving your gratitude in the midst of whatever you're going through is a chair God sits on and it's an invitation for him to come into your problem one of the reasons breakthrough comes through praise is because breakthrough praise I'm sorry invites God into our situation and gives him a chair to sit on complaining on the other hand invites the demons to mess with us because complaining to the devil with worship is to God if worship draws God complaining draws the demons and I can prove it to you because when Israel complained snakes came and bit him and snakes speaks of demons and the devil in the Bible when you complain and you whine whatever your reason for that is you're actually whistling and calling out the devils of depression heaviness and discouragement to come and mess more with your life but when you worship you're calling out on God God's angels begin to come and first thing God does is he sits on your praise in the Old Testament priests were commanded to carry the ark of God on their shoulders and one time when David was bringing the ark back into Jerusalem he had the ark sit on the cart that the oxen carried who created that idea Philistines Philistines when they captured the ark they put the ark on the card and they delivered it back to Israel they didn't know better and Israel instead of allowing the ark to sit on the shoulders of the priests they continued to perfect the methods of the Philistines and even David in his ignorance puts the ark on the card and the oxen carry it and as oxen stumbled the ark started to slip and Uzzah came in to help the ark and God struck him and he fell and he died and David says I don't want to bring the ark back into my house if that's how strict God is but then David learned that the ark was not supposed to be carried on the cart it's supposed to be carried on the shoulders and he brought the ark back with priests carrying the ark on the shoulders and God's glory and blessing was upon him God did not intend his praise to be on the worship team but on your shoulders praise and worship is not the job of the worship team it's the job of the priests and kings unto our God and you are one of them come on somebody you want the demons not to sit here put the Holy Ghost here by putting praise because God says you prepare praise I'll sit on it 
because praise is the chair God sits on. Come on, somebody. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Number two, praise confuses the devil. How does praise bring breakthrough? Because it invites God. Number two, praise confuses the devil. It says in Judges chapter 7 when Gideon went up against Midianites, when 300 men blew the trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp and the army fled. We see in 2nd Chronicles a similar situation. When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Amnon and so far and they were defeated. In many cases in the Bible, and I didn't include Joshua and Jericho, but when you praise God, God causes the confusion of your enemy. When you don't praise God, the enemy causes confusion in you. Many times people are defeated, but before they're defeated, they're confused. And I'm going to give you a secret of confusion. Problems automatically will confuse you. But when you worship, confusion leaves. And it doesn't just evaporate. God sends the confusion to the devil. God says, I'm not going to waste this confusion. I'm not going to just take it away. He says, I'm going to send it to the devil. And devil unpacks the confusion and remember this before you get defeated you get confused and the devil gets confused why because then he gets defeated it confuses devil to see you worship especially when everything is pointing against you especially when you're supposed to be complaining because it's not natural and when he sees you worshiping he's smelling supernatural is coming because you're acting supernatural you're acting not natural to your instincts already, not natural to your humanity. And devil sees that if they're worshiping, he gets nervous because something supernatural is about to happen in your life. I declare that in Jesus' mighty name. As you worship, you're already saying, God, I'm stepping into the supernatural into the supernatural paying of my bills, into the supernatural provision of my needs. I step into the supernatural connections in my life. God, I believe in the supernatural because I praise you. When you praise, you're saying, God, I'm ready for the supernatural. And the devil gets confused. I like to see the devil confused. How about you? Do you want to see the devil confused? Some of you who, who bring heaviness, maybe you're ex full of anxiety and full of worry don't just ask God to take it away say Lord put it on the devil you got a headache say Lord don't take that away put it on the devil say Lord I pray I'll praise you Lord I'll sing praises to your name if you give whatever I feel to all the demons around me within the 200 mile radius Jesus Woo. and then you see you have victory you feel better you see better it's a scriptural thing instead of spirit of heaviness God gives us a garment of praise heaviness belongs to the devil that depression belongs to the devil what belongs to us is a garment of praise and when we worship when we praise it messes up with the devil it confuses him and God gives us the clarity of mind somebody say amen, amen. number three how breakthrough comes through praise it enthrones God God gives God a chair it confuses our enemy therefore it defeats him and number three it protects our heart before breakthrough comes sometimes there are delays sometimes there are seeming denies seems seems like we've got denied of that breakthrough and when people worship and praise and they stop their heart can get affected by what they're going through but when you continue the attitude of worship and praise something happens to your heart it gets protected a guy who can save you 15 percent or more on your car insurance but Jesus covers all 100% and saves you absolutely everything he saves your heart from heartbreak he saves your mind from being broken he saves your emotions he saves you from whatever you're going through are you with me Titanic did not sink because there was a lot of water in the ocean Titanic sunk because there was a lot of water in the, in the Titanic and sometimes we go through stuff and we have cracks and things get inside of us and we begin to sink emotionally our heart begins to take its toll even if God gets us out of that problem we are so shattered we can't enjoy the blessing because the process destroyed our heart 
because what we've been through and God sent you the new husband but because the old husband broke your heart so bad you're making the new husband pay for the old husband and you destroyed that relationship God sent you the new job but because the old boss messed you up you don't trust anybody so praise protects you while you're going through stuff come on somebody praise protects you praise protects you at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and prisoners were listening to them you know Paul couldn't stop the prison from being in prison he couldn't change many things but he could control his attitude he could control his reaction and what he decided to do is at midnight this is 12 o'clock he's tired he's beaten he lost a lot of blood he, he's not pretty popular in that city right now because he helped a girl to be free from a demon of divination a spirit of python and he is there and the bible says paul chooses to praise and sing hymns to god picks a hymn and starts to sing he doesn't sing about how bad he feels he sings about the goodness and the power of god and god begins to move but i want you to see that when you sing when you worship on your worst day even if the breakthrough doesn't come right away the big breakthrough happens is that you're protected you shield and when you come out of that situation you don't smell like that situation you don't look like that situation you are like the four Hebrew uh, uh, the, the Hebrew three Hebrew boys when they went to the furnace of fire and the Bible says there was no smell of fire that's uh, that's supernatural when you can go to the fire and not smell like the fire you don't have the smell see some people go through divorce they go through a heartbreak they go through abuse but they speak they post on Facebook Instagram they're constantly trying to get even with people prove something to people why because they're they're hurt yes they're no longer in that place but they drag that place into their life see the first time it happens you're a victim second time you're a volunteer come on, come on. God wants to separate your issue from your identity but he can do that when you praise him come on somebody he can do that when you worship the Bible says we are like a palm tree the righteous people are like a palm tree palm trees have very beautiful characteristics that resemble Christians one of those characteristics is during a storm a palm tree bends it's flexible and therefore a storm cannot break a palm tree because the only thing the storm can do is bend it I want you to see the palm tree doesn't go with the storm when the storm comes in the palm tree doesn't unplug itself from the ground and says well I'm going with the storm whatever the storm is going I'm going with the flow <laughs> palm tree doesn't do that see some of you you go with the flow if the problems go that way that's where your mind goes your confession goes palm tree doesn't go with the flow it just bends when the storm comes in knowing the storms don't last long every storm in the bible every storm in the weather always ended and so will yours and once it ends you will go right back up if you were not broken the only trees that don't go right back up is if the storm broke them and the way storm breaks us is if the storm doesn't bend us during the storm maybe you can't stop the storm right now maybe your confession maybe your decision there's nothing you can do about the storm don't stand against it maybe bend don't try to have your why is this happening to me stand in worship job had a storm in his life worse than probably anybody in here will ever face lost everything and the scripture says in job is that job arose he tore his robe he shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshiped now then he complained that's fine if you're complaining follows your worship the problem is if you're complaining replaces your worship the problem is if you're complaining it's the only thing you have to God God is okay with your hurt God is okay with you letting all of that out to God but God says before we do that I have a protocol you come into my presence with thanksgiving you enter into my courts with praise so before you get into complaining and whining and asking let's bow and worship and when you worship I'll protect your heart I'll protect your mind. I'll protect your family. I'll protect your finances. I will bless you. Come on somebody. Give God worship in this house right now. Yay! Yes Lord. Shout with me. My storm will end. Say so through praise I'll be protected. In Jesus name. Take your seat. 
these storms, they don't last, but our heart gets protected when we worship. God protects it. And lastly, praise gives me new perspective. Praise gives me new perspective. How does breakthrough come? Breakthrough comes that I give God a room to sit on through my praise. Number two, through my praise, automatically, I might not feel it, but I'm actually, the moment you're feeling better, you're not confused. Right away, I can tell you, what you felt before that is what the enemy is feeling right now. That confusion got shifted to someone else, to your enemy. And that's what praise does. The thirdly is that praise, worship, it protects your heart. And lastly, is that how breakthrough really manifests is that when you worship and when you praise, God changes your perspective. And God changes your attitude. God changes your attitude. I want you to see this attitude somebody says that attitude is an established way of responding to people and situations that we have learned based on our beliefs values and assumptions we hold it's a frame of work it's a frame of mind dealing with change opportunities failures and problems somebody says that 10 percent of your life is how you make it the rest of the 90 is how you take it meaning stuff will happen and 10% probably is that you make that. The rest of the 90% somebody else did. Something else did. Question is how are you taking it? Come on now. There's one way of taking it which is through negativity. The other way is taking it through positivity. Yeah. And the goal is not to create positive vibes. The goal is to stay in the presence long enough where God's positive vibes affect you so much that you begin to have the same perspective on life as God does. Come on. It's like a man who lost an arm in war and the doctor was stitching him up and says, man, sucks to be you, you lost an arm. He's a doctor, I gave it away. Oh. It's like somebody's coming to a man who has no legs and says, man, how can you be so positive having no legs? He says, I'm surprised, how can you be so negative having legs? <laughs> Perspective. Oh. Same people have the same problem, but they take it differently. And because they take it differently, they attract different outcomes. Life is really about how you take things. Life is not just about how you make things and what happens in the presence of God is God's presence begins to elevate you to the place where you see problem from a different perspective. Yeah. Kind of like in the airplane, when you fly in the airplane, you know, in the airplane, the higher it goes, the smaller things become. The deeper you go with God, the smaller your problems become. Then you come down from the depth with God and you deal with these problems like Jesus did. When he faced 5,000 men, not women and children included, the Bible says that he took five loaves and two fish, he raised it to the Father and he said, Lord, I'm in trouble. Father, bail me out. I don't know what to do. He didn't pray like that. The Bible says he gave thanks. How can you, in front of a big problem, give thanks? When you have a new perspective. He gave thanks and God did a miracle. He faces a dead Lazarus and the Lazarus stinketh, the Bible says. And Jesus is not standing there saying, Lord, it's so bad. I'm not sure what to do. He says, Lord, I thank you that you hear me already. And he, after that, begins to command Lazarus to come to life. He has a different reaction because he has a different attitude. And different attitude is always born out of a gratitude. Your gratitude adjusts your attitude. And your attitude adjusts your altitude. Come on, somebody. Your attitude is contagious. Make sure your, yours is worth catching. Bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't go very far with it. Very soon you get stuck. One of the reasons why many people's breakthrough is not coming is because their attitude simply stinks. It's simply not good. You listen to them for five, six, ten minutes and you will find out. You say, well, keep praying. Keep praying. I believe that when you ask God for a miracle, after a while, when you pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, God gives you faith. And when He gives you faith, my conclusion is you stop praying for it and you start thanking God for it. Because when you keep thanking God for it, after you received faith, I'm not saying if you didn't receive faith, but if you receive faith, you know what, it's going to happen. I just, this assurance that came from God, substance of things hoped for, assurance of things unseen. When you have that assurance, stop praying for it and start thanking for it. Say, Lord, I thank you. It's already happening. 
even if it's been two years it's not happening say Lord I received that two years ago and I'm thanking you that it's already happening Abraham changed his name Sarah changed their name and they changed their confession something about that has to change and if people remind you that you don't have the breakthrough if the devil reminds you you don't have the breakthrough if you remind you that you don't have the breakthrough then take all of those worries put them in a microwave and put praise songs on it and transform them from worry to worship and then your faith will be intact something happens to your perspective when you worship it changes you change the way you see your problem you change the way you speak you change the way you behave you change everything about you there was a man who had an old mule and had a dry well and he wanted to get rid of the old mule and the dry well so he had a simple solution to put the old mule in the old well and cover the mule and the well with dirt kill the mule get rid of the well simple solution man think very clear simple took the mule out and dropped the mule in the well drops the mule there and the mule kind of realized that it's not going to be a good day for him he realized he's not getting a shower and it's not a cakewalk it's just gonna be a bad day and then the mule his worst fears became real where the dirt start being thrown on his back he had two options one is to cry about the fact that he's old he's not wanted and somebody wants to kill him the second option was to get all the dirt he gets on his back shake the dirt off and stand on it and of course the mule stopped crying shook the dirt off stood on it the more dirt they threw well the more floor he had the more dirt they threw he shook it off and stood on it shook it off and stood on it until they threw so much dirt that the mule walked off the well question is when the devil throws bad things at you do you let him come inside of you or do you shake it off and stand on it shake it off and stand on it should your neighbor say shake it off and stand on it should your neighbor say you need to shake it off that negativity you need to shake it off that thing that people said you need to shake it off if you're rehearsing those thoughts you need to just shake it off and stand on it and then you can walk out of whatever situation the devil puts you in because praise will give you a new perspective come on somebody give God praise hallelujah 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 come on let's just lift those hands let's just lift those hands and just right now I want you to begin to create a throne for God to sit on I want to say Holy Spirit I welcome you right now come on every hand raised I want you to say Holy Spirit I welcome you right now your presence in this place I sing praises to your name I give glory to your name right now God we worship you come on every mouth open right now every mouth open every person release that praise release that praise right now fill the atmosphere with praise right now give God a throne to sit on confuse the devil right now let there be a transfer of confusion depression and discouragement of the devil's kingdom let there be miracles released right now let there be angels that are released right now let there be a new perspective right now, a new attitude. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, church.
praise your name father we exalt you in this place hallelujah thank you for watching this content i hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come